you step with God, you start to realize you stop being the child favorite. But because right now you are moving out of the moving movement of people and you are starting to move into the movement of God, you start to realize that the flow is not the same anymore. All of a sudden now you have turned your face against the current and you are going against the current. So on the, on, when you were still in the kingdom of darkness, you could flow with the current. But now as you enter the kingdom of God, now you turn your head and you're going against the current. Am I talking to somebody like that? So the Leviticals, the Levitical, the Levitus, the Levit, the Levites were called, were called to be people who are against the current. Now being a Levite was not such an easy task as we consume it and perceive it to be. Because one of the high priest's duty is to come and sprinkle an offering on the mercy seat. And and, 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 and and that was seemingly an easy task to enter into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the, the offering, the blood on the mercy seat. And, and now some of us will say that seems easy enough. But if God is not pleased with that offering, you would die. And now not, not spiritual death like Adam and Eve, but they would physically die. That's why they had a chain around his leg that when he has fallen, they just pull his body out. Because if you enter trying to save him, you yourself will die. Am I talking to somebody? So we have to understand our spiritual role from a Levitical perspective. Because when God has called us to be one of his own, he has called us to be able to die for what we believe. Because whenever the priest stands, he does not stand for a group of people. He does not stand for a church of people, but he stands on behalf of the nation. And nowadays the church and the, the church is full of pastors and no priests. People who stand for their own interests and never the interests of the kingdom. Who are worried about what they are gaining rather than what the kingdom is losing. Not realizing that what they gain is what they lose. And kingdom-minded people want to want people to be the disciples of Jesus, not the disciples of man. Am I talking to somebody? Now the Levitical the Levitical priest now in the book of Levi, he symbolizes to us how do you give an offering that is fitting for the Lord. And in this in this case, he exemplifies that we have to crush it into pieces. And I started to ask myself the question. Why is it that we needed to crush the offering into pieces? Then my mindset went into the creating of the anointing oil. That when God was when, when God gave the instruction of the anointing oil, He gave them that whatever olives that you gather, I need you to crush them, to shred them. And out of that crushing comes out the fullness of the anointing. And I started, I asked myself, God, what are you trying to say? And God said to me, you know, in the new dispensation, I'm not crushing olives anymore for the anointing, but I'm crushing people for the anointing. I'm pressing something in them so that out of that crushing comes the oil that creates function. Am I talking to somebody? And now I started to understand that God, in order for him to build priests, he has to build people who are crushed before him. And it is difficult today to imagine ministers who are not crushed before him, who are not broken, who are not contrite, who are not humbled by life. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, I, I'm feeling somebody receiving this on another level. So now whenever the Lord God crushes you, he, he shreds you to pieces, knowing that the pieces are the essence for the oil to move out of you. Before he builds you, there has to be an oil that moves out of you. High five your neighbor, say it needs to move out of you. Oh, uh, Out of their belly shall come out rivers of living water. But somebody has to understand, you have to break a rock in order to make the water come out. If somebody has to break the rock and make the water come out, can somebody speak to me today? Ooh. Now, I, I, I remember when I look at the story of Moses. Moses it goes to the rock the first time and he beats it and it, it pulls out the water. Then the second time he goes to it and he speaks to it. Then God says, speak to it and he still beats it. Oh, you got to hear me. 
You gotta hear me now. That God, in the initial phases when He used to do the law, you had to beat good things from God. You had to be uh, contrite, sacrificing yourself and, and not relying on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And now in the new dispensation, God needs you to talk what you need. That's why now when he comes in, he says, let the poor, let the sick, let the weak, because now you are not in the dispensation of the offering, but you're in the dispensation of the declaring. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say, I declare it in the name of Jesus. Now you are not justified by works. Uh, you are not justified by what you do. Right now, long ago, you had to beat things in order to get into the seventh day. But right now, you live in a perpetual state of rest where you labor no more, but you just declare it and it happens. So God now reveals to me that the Levitical order is the order of what God wanted to create out of Egypt, by the, out of Israel, that when he took the people out of Israel, he wanted to build a nation of worshippers. Can I talk about this quickly? Because he was not really concerned about their economic stance, but he was concerned about their stance in worship. He says, let my people go in the desert, not so that they may be rich, not that they may live in abundance, but so that they may worship me. Now, the Levitical mindset is a mindset of total worship. That everything that they do and they interact with is an interaction of total worship. Am I talking to somebody? Right? And now when God tells to move you from a state of being an ordinary human being and he wants you to be like him, he's pulling you to a level where worship is your abiding and living principle. Oh, somebody say something to me. So now whenever you find yourself moving in a situation that is tough, that is burning and that is crushing, some of us, we ask ourselves the question, God, when am I going to move out of this? But the real question is, God, what are you pulling out of me? Can somebody say, what are you taking out of me? And right now I know I'm speaking to some people who think this is theoretical because they're not going through anything. And some of you are thinking this is so, you know, you know, I've never heard the bishop go so philosophical in our minds, but that's because you never went through anything. But you know that whenever God is crushing you, there's no pride in you left. There's no esteem in you left. Everything that you had your confidence laid up in starts to fall apart. You thought you trusted in the man, the man falls apart. You thought you trusted in your family, your family falls apart. You thought you trusted in your in your, your pastor, the pastor falls apart. You thought you trusted in your car, your car just gets stuck along the way. You, know, you thought you trusted in the bank account, in your job, you start to lose that job. You, start, you thought you trusted in your mind, in your thinking, you start to not even go to school. But you stop asking yourself the question of why is it that I'm going through this? But just ask God, why is it that you're crushing this out of me? And if some of us had the eyes of the Spirit, we would now stop complaining and start praising. Because whenever God crushes, it means that there is something in me to pull out. That is why the scripture tells you there's nothing that you go through that is too hard for you. It means that you were born to be crushed because what is in you needs to be pulled out. No situation. But I tell you that. I'm not talking to somebody. I still need to go here. I still need to go there. So now whenever God starts to do this revelations of grace, he says, now, I want you to see Jesus. I want you to see Jesus in you through your situations. I want Jesus to be revealed in you through what you go through. That's why Jesus, when he left, he did not say those who rejoice with me shall eat with me. He says those who suffer with me. Those who suffer with me. Can I give you an advice when you're going through whatever you're going through? Don't suffer alone. For those who suffer with me. You know, I've never realized anything that is more difficult than keeping a spiritual stance when trouble is around you. There's nothing more difficult than, than trying to not swear. When somebody is swearing at you. There's nothing more difficult they're not retaliating when somebody is attacking you. But God says the statement, this is, this is interesting, because most of us, we think that God works in our activity. 
that God works not in your activity, God works through your patience. Well, then he says, patience never produces perseverance. Because God is producing a lot of things through your patience. Now, patience is not the mere fact of it's going to come even no matter what I do. If I come, Victor, and I say I'm going to give you a job in three months' time, and I'm going to pay you 50,000 rands, and I say, please be patient, don't get employed. And when you go looking for a job, and I find that when I come with my job, you already have a job. Were you patient? Some of us, God is telling us he will bring that man and he's saying, please wait. And when God brings what he's prepared for you, you already have yours. Look at your name and say, God gave me yours. Some of us, God is busy telling us to be patient, your minions are coming. Is just wait a little while longer. And then you find yourself getting stuck in one situation or the other. And you start to lose the faith. Can I have four guys here? I just want to deal with this quickly. Sarah, Sarah, come here as well. Four guys. Un, dos, tres, cuatro. Uh, I just want you to make a circle. Let's try to as well. No, we start to try to learn as well. Now, most of us just want to do this quickly. Most of us. Today. I did this in our station. I just want to do one last time. Just come this side. Most of us, we are playing with the anointing and we undermine the anointing because we are covered. So if you were to observe, it is not you or your power that is stopping you from being defeated. But it is God's power that is keeping you from being attacked. And now when you are in God, you are thinking you are powerful to not go through certain things. But it's because you are so covered that certain things do not go through you. And now, because now you have gained an ultra ego of self, you start to play, come here, my dear. You start to play with the devil and the devil for today, God give me mercy. You start to play with the devil, hola, 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 hola. Hola, hola, hola. Now you see, he's not attacking her now because he's too close to run back. If you were to get her here, she can just be quickly. I don't know, she's not, it's like, hola, hola. She's thinking, I'm still there. Hola, 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 hola. And a minute ago, hi, hi. But because 
you are in Christ, but you don't have the revelation of what's covering you. You will undermine the covering of God upon your life. Mm. And you will consider it in your potency to resist whatever is coming. Some fights you did not fight because you are where you are because you did not fight some fights. And the some fights did not come to you because you were covered. It is not because you are so special you got where you were. This is what God meant when he says because you got a hedge around him. How did the devil know that there's a hedge? Because he attacked and the hedge prevented him. Am I talking to the right people? Somebody say amen. amen. Now, when you are in the hedge, your understanding of what the Spirit of God is doing, you do not understand that when you want to find yourself, you have to be lost in Christ. Even the spirit of truth. And now you are in the covenant trying to find your identity out of Jesus. And you start to use methods of the world to try to understand yourself when you are out of the world. You start to read books like Discovering Yourself. But you don't realize that those are worldly methods of self-founding. Am I talking to somebody? Can somebody say amen today? We are about to get to this thing. Let me see my time. I still got a bit of time. Not understanding that it is your depth in the spirit that reveals you to you. You may be seated quickly. The world discovers who they are from exploration and experience. And whenever God is about to reveal, whenever people know new things, it's because they either one experience, number two, explored. Explored can fall in the bracket of research. They thought that the world was flat. Am I talking to you? Until they explored where the world is. And then they discovered it is not actually flat, it is round. And then they discover through exploration. And every time they explore, they know more. Every time they dig deeper, they know more. But God is saying this, but the spirit of truth shall teach you all things. No, no, it doesn't say also. It doesn't say some. Most. It says all things. Therefore, your identity is not hidden in a self-help book. Your identity is hidden in the spirit of God. So whenever you are being broken, God is releasing an anointing in you. And he's trying to reveal you to you. And whenever God wants to reveal you to you, there is a brokenness that happens because you have been built on wrong foundations. And when God wants to build what is His, He prays what is yours. And every time you are holding on to something and you lose grip of it, just know that God is about to hold a grip of me. Even though I may have lost my mind, God still has my mind. And every breaking process, every wounding process, is a process that the Spirit of God wants to turn around to be your anointing. 
Can I talk about anointing quickly? When God talks about anointing, it means about his sovereign power to defeat the battle. That's why they say David was anointed for battle. It meant he had the anointing of God, the power of God, that enabled him to overcome. And whenever God says, I'm releasing an anointing in you, I'm releasing a sovereign power that will enable you to be a victorious. And oh, somebody got to hear me today. God is saying, I'm releasing an anointing in this house today. And whenever you are about to face something, know that your cursing was not in vain. Know that your breaking was not for naught. But God is saying there is something that I have produced out of your breaking. There is something I have produced out of your womb. Oh, don't you know that when the sky heals, the, 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 the skin becomes stronger on it. God is saying to you uh, that after the brokenness is done, uh, the sky will make you look stronger. Uh, look at every scar you have. Uh, they see the tissue bones, the tissues that are on scars. It's almost like they were double the skin that they were before. God is saying in 